Hi everyone, me Robert here and in this video I will show you how you can turn your WordPress site into a multi-tenant application server. For this purpose we just released the version 2 of our multi-tenancy cloud server WordPress plugin that allows you to virtualize options, database tables and even REST APIs in the WordPress backend. When I say virtualization, I mean making data available to tenants without requiring you to write a single line of code or to make changes to your applications. But if you are a developer, you can also derive your apps from our classes and extend it to your needs. So potentially, this tool is the application server you've been waiting for. Before we look at it live in the system, let me say a few words how it works. Basically, you create cloud services that virtualize the options, the database tables and even the caches and that provide frontends for your tenants. And you also create cloud servers that typically are projects or type of customers or any type of brackets you want to use to group your cloud services together. Your tenants can register to a cloud server through a registration form. Each tenant automatically gets a tenant frontend with all cloud services for which he is entitled. Tenants can purchase cloud services in the integrated marketplace and there is also an integration to the Google Cloud Marketplace available. Finally, I will show you how easily you can create API documentations for your cloud services and to provide them to your tenants in the tenant frontend. As always, before we get started, if you like this content, please click the like button, the subscribe button and the notification bell below so that you guys can keep up to date with all of our videos. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start with the backend of the multi-tenancy cloud server. Once you've activated the plugin, you will see the multi-tenancy cloud server menu entry here in your WordPress admin backend. It comes with several sub-menus, the tenant instances, the cloud services, the cloud servers and the settings. If you have also installed the Open API Builder for WordPress, then it comes with the API Editor sub-menu here. And if you also have installed the GCP Managed Service Integration, which is an integration into the Google Cloud Marketplace, then it also comes with the Entitlement sub-menu here. On the Tenant Instances sub-menu, you can see all tenant instances that have been created on your system. Each user that registers as a tenant on your platform gets a tenant instance entry here. The user who registered as a tenant automatically becomes the owner of this tenant instance. Technically, tenant instances are custom post types on your WordPress platform. Each tenant instance owner gets a unique tenant frontend where he can see all cloud services for which he is entitled and where he also can invite other users. Now let's switch to the Cloud Services submenu. In the Cloud Services submenu, you can create new cloud services for your tenants. Each cloud service can be assigned to one or more cloud servers. You can create new cloud servers here in the Cloud Servers menu. With this Cloud Service approach, you can separate your cloud services by different projects or by different customer groups. Technically, cloud servers are custom taxonomies that come with many settings itself. Whenever a user registers as a tenant on your platform, he can choose between the different cloud servers on your system. And he has to choose an active cloud server, which determines which cloud services are available to him or which cloud services he can purchase in the built-in marketplace. But now let's switch back to the cloud services. As already mentioned, new cloud services can be created by clicking the add new button here. But you also can create a cloud service by code by deriving your cloud service from our cloud service class. For example, this demo cloud service here was created by code 
but it doesn't make a difference if you create this cloud service by code or if you create it here in the backend. But now let's have a deeper look into this cloud service. On the right side of this cloud service, you can see the cloud service on which this cloud service is available. And here on the bottom right side, you can see the optional entitlements in case your cloud service was purchased on the Google Cloud Marketplace. At the center of this page, you find the most important settings of cloud services. These are the virtualization of WordPress options, the virtualization of tables, database tables, and the virtualization of caches, but also the customization of the tenant frontend, and also the settings of the Open API Builder in case this plugin is installed. But first things first, let's have a look into the virtualization settings. Here you can see the virtualization of several WordPress options that is performed through this cloud service. By listing a WordPress option name here, you make its content unique per tenant without writing a single line of code. You can list multiple WordPress option names here divided by semicolons. We differentiate between the built-in options, which can be declared through the source code of cloud services, and that cannot be changed here, and custom options, which you can enter here as you need them. We also differentiate between explicit options and implicit options. With explicit options, you have to define the exact WordPress option name, but with implicit options, you just have to define the left substring of the WordPress options. And all WordPress options that fit into this pattern will get virtualized. And you are not limited to WordPress options. You can even virtualize database tables and caches here. Another important feature of cloud services is the customization of their part of the tenant frontend. So you can define a primary output page here, which is the first page the tenant sees when he clicks on this cloud service in the menu of his tenant frontend. For example, you could choose to display the options on the primary output page or to display them in a further submenu. And here you can specify which of these virtualized options shall be displayed on the options page and how they shall be displayed by defining a display type and a label. You can specify one option here per line and we will see the results later on when we have a deeper look into the tenant frontend. If you also have installed our Open API Builder plugin, then you even can display the Open API documentation of your cloud service in the tenant frontend and even the Open API editor. Without further plugins, you can protect your cloud service with a license key pattern here. This means that this cloud service just will be displayed in the tenant frontend if the tenant enters a valid license key for this cloud service in his tenant frontend. If the login to your cloud service happens on an external server, then you can enter this external login URL here. If the tenant has to purchase this cloud service first before he can use it, then you can enter a post ID to this marketplace item here that gets displayed on the tenant frontend. If you have our Open API Builder plugin installed, and you want to create and display an open API document for this cloud service in the tenant frontend, then you can click on edit open API and this will open the open API editor with the title of your cloud service. And you can build the open API documentation here and save it with the button here in the top of this window. If you also have our GCP marketplace managed service integration installed, and you sell your cloud service on the Google Cloud Marketplace, then you can define an eligible uh, GCP product here. But now let's stop with the backend features and let's have a look into the tenant frontend. 
This is the basic look of a tenant frontend. At the top of this page, the tenant can see the number of the active cloud server to which he is registered to and the number of his tenant instance. And here on the top right of this tenant frontend, we can see the roles to which this tenant has been assigned to. That's basically the tenant's instance owner and a role that has been assigned instantly by the demo cloud service. On the left side in the My Apps menu, the tenant can see all his cloud service for which he is entitled. Currently, this is just our demo cloud service. Please be aware that this is just a very basic layout and everything can be adapted very easily to your needs. Now let's click on the demo cloud service for which we previously have defined virtual WordPress options in the admin backend. For example, if we look at my first option here and we switch back to the admin backend, we can see that we have defined the label here and the type here for this uh, WordPress option. And we can enter some values here. For example, this is a test from tenant instance number eight, 4711, my password, some additional text. And now we can click on the save button and this stores our tenant specific values in our virtualized WordPress options. Here it outputs, this is a test from tenant instance number eight, which is stored in this option. If we look in the source code, we can see that we output the content of this option with the regular WordPress function get option. But under the hood, the virtualized version of this option is delivered. So if we would log out here and log in as a different tenant, we would see completely different values than this tenant, but delivered through the same virtualized WordPress options. But let's test it. I log out here and I log in as demo user two. Here I can see that my tenant instance is now the number 27. I switch to the demo cloud service and here I can see that no values have been stored yet. I enter some values with this tenant instance as well. Test from tenant instance number 27, 999. I am demo user 2 and save. This instantly says test from tenant instance number 27. Now I log out again and I log in as the previous tenant demo user 1 again. I switch to the demo cloud service and here I can see that my original values are still there. Please note that all of this was managed by the multi-tenancy cloud server behind the scenes and didn't require you to write a single line of code. But now let's go back to the admin backend and change the tenant frontend a little bit. Here in the admin backend of our demo cloud service, we change the primary output page to open API viewer page and the display option page to yes. This should display the open API document on the main menu of our cloud service and the option page in the sub menu of our demo cloud service. We scroll up and click update. Then we switch back to the tenant front end and refresh the page. Now you can see that the open API documentation is displayed on the main menu page of the demo cloud service and the option page is displayed on a sub menu. Of course, there's a lot more to explore 
and that I could show you. But that's all for today. If you like this stuff, please click the like and the subscribe button below and check out the plugins in the description below. Thank you for watching.